Good morning. <clears throat> Welcome to our daily devotion. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is Friday. It is September 10th. Again, I want to thank those of you that were concerned about me and my wife. Uh, so many of you offered to bring food over to us, but we were fortunate enough to have my brother and his girlfriend here that were cooking for us and cooked some great meals. Uh, I lost my appetite there a little bit. I, thank goodness I lost almost four pounds. That's one good thing that came out of it. Um, but uh, we're doing so much better now. Uh, we've decided uh, not to have church this Sunday because we have to quarantine for 10 days and my 10th day is really on Sunday and they didn't want to take a chance of of spreading it yet. So we won't meet until the following Sunday, but we will meet with the youth groups this Tuesday and Wednesday. My quarantine will be over at that time. So Impact and Crash will meet this week, okay? What's the one thing that you own that you spend an awful lot of time with, that you spend a lot of your money? Uh, it's probably the most, not probably, I'm sure it's the most important thing to you. Can you think of what it might be? It's your body. It's your body. Only Marcy. It, it's money, Lily. It's your body. Well, we all have a body. It, it's it's most likely the most important thing to us. Um, even though we know it won't last forever, we still take special care of it. Uh, we spend whatever is necessary to take care of it. Um, we we uh, there, there's no we we spare no expense. If the doctor said, if you don't have this operation, you're going to die, but it's going to cost you X amount of dollars, you somehow or another are going to do everything you can to raise that money because you want to keep on living. It's just built into us. We all have a desire to want to live. Uh, we're attracted to bodies. <clears throat> Unfortunately, some of us abuse our bodies. Even though they're so important to us, we abuse them. Uh, we can abuse them through smoking or vaping. Uh, it's been proven that those things are, cause great damage to your body. Uh, chewing tobacco, uh, drugs, alcohol, excessively uh, uh, is hard, harmful to your body. Overeating, eating the wrong foods, harmful to your body. Lack of exercise, harmful to your body. So even though it's, it's, it's important to us, we don't always take care of it, okay? <clears throat> I can remember when I first got my, my, my first new vehicle, 1969. I uh, got a uh, 69 Mustang Mach 1, black on black. Oh my gosh, it was the most important thing to me. It was so important to me. And then after about six, eight months, I wasn't, I wasn't even washing it. It's material things give you joy for a time, but it doesn't last. But your body is just so important to you. So important to you. When, uh, when, we, when my wife and I got the virus, we did whatever we could to, to, we were taking zinc, we were taking vitamins, we were taking the things that we thought would help us to get through the, the virus. We take care, hopefully you take care of your body. Um, I'm going to get into something a little bit later <clears throat> this morning. Jesus had a body, of course, uh, <clears throat> but he offered his body up. He, he, he went through incredible suffering, torture. Uh, why? Be because he knew that that's why he existed. He knew why he, why he came to earth. He knew that he had to pay that price. And Isaiah tells us that his body was totally, he said it didn't even look like a human anymore. He was willing to sacrifice his body for other. But you hear of these things all the time <clears throat> during war. You hear of soldiers that that are in a in a vehicle or in a in a hole somewhere or something, and a grenade falls in, and they instinctively fall on the grenade to give up their body to save the other soldiers that are with them. That, that's kind of what, what Jesus did. The apostles offered their bodies up, with suffering, torturing, and death. Why? Because they knew what was waiting for them after death. They, they got it. 
They knew that their body was just temporary. They knew that there was a, that Jesus had pounded into their head the fact that there was a life after death. And that even though they would suffer terrible deaths, as he warned them, that they would reign with him in heaven for eternity. Uh, Jesus even tells us here in Matthew 10, 28, he says, Do not be afraid of those who can kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. Rather be afraid of the one who can destroy both soul and body in hell. People can just take our body. They can take our body, but they can't take our soul. Jesus says he can take both. He can take both. Now, what about you? How, how important is your body to you? How well do you take care of your body? Good morning, John. How well do you take care of your body? Uh, most people tell, will say that it's our body. It's my body. No one can tell me what to do with my body. I should be able to do with it whatever I want. But that's not what God tells us. God tells us this. Do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who's in you, whom you receive from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your body. You are not your own. God paid a terrible price for your body. He came down to earth in the form of a human called Jesus and suffered and died on the cross for you. And then he gave you his spirit when you put your faith in him. And it says that he now owns you. You are his child. And as a result of being his child, you're going to be heirs of everything that he has. So he says, so to honor your, take care of your body. Take care of it, he says. Uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 6.15, right ahead of that, it says this. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Your, your bodies are members of, of Christ. In 12.12, 12, it says this. You're all familiar with this. In 12.12, 12, it says the body is a unit, though it's made up of many parts. It, we, just think of how many parts are in your body. I don't know if I've shared this with you before, but I can remember going to the exhibition about the human body and I, it still boggles in my mind. It just seems unbelievable that you have enough blood vessels, veins in your body to go around the earth three and a half times. There's that many in the human body to go around the earth three and a half times. Is, is that amazing? That, that's just mind-boggling. Mind-boggling. Our body has many parts, but it's just one. And he goes on to say, later on, he goes, now we are... Now, you also are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. Our body is made up of so many parts, and the body of Christ is made up of so many parts, and you, your body, is a part of that. You are a part of the body of Christ. The church is the body of Christ. The church is us people. We make up the body of Christ. Now, this is what I want to end with. Uh, we're doing this with the youth group, and they were looking forward to it this past week, but we couldn't meet. We were talking about demons, and and, and they had a great, intro, super interest in it. They wanted they want me to continue on the on the series because it just really was interesting to them. Things that I thought that they knew already, they they didn't know, and uh, <clears throat> so I'm going to continue teaching them. But one of the things that came out, one of the questions was, can a Christian be possessed by a demon? And it was interesting, uh, Liz, Liz gave the answer to it uh, when, when I asked, and she says, no, and I said, why? And she says, because the, we have the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit's within us. A, a demon, Jesus and the demon can't, demon can't live in the, same, in the same place. So no, we can't. But I want to talk about this in closing. We, it's our body, okay? But there's, but there's ways that we can, when, when, you, when, when there's a, something in your life that you can't control and it controls you, that, that's, that's, that's almost like, it's almost like being a demon. It's not, but it's like being a demon. Let, let me give you an example. Young people that are obsessed with video games. They're just obsessed with it. And, 
and they play them all the times and it keeps them from getting good grades in school and it keeps them from doing their homework and it keeps them from doing their chores in their house. It's like they're obsessed with it and, and they can't get away from it. I've seen it already where, where a parent that will say, it's time to eat now, we got your food ready here, but they're in the middle of a game, they will let their food get cold because they got to finish that game. It's, it's like that game controls them. The game controls them. Th that's dangerous. That's dangerous. Uh, I, and and uh, other things. You know, I have a son that chews tobacco, and he has tried so hard to quit. Each time he had a child, he tried to quit, and he could, and he could, and he couldn't quit. It's it's it. Could, he has to have that, that 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 nicotine. Ooh. Think of this, how many of you, how many of you got up this morning and you had to have your cup of coffee? You, you, wouldn't, you couldn't make it without it. You'd have withdrawals if you didn't have it. It, it. it controls you. You don't control it. You don't control it. It controls you. It's nicotine, caffeine, drugs, alcohol. It, it, if, if, if you can't control it, then it controls you. If, if you sit down to eat, and you tell yourself you're just going to eat this portion, but you eat that portion and you can't stop and you still end up eating more than you know you should. It, you're not controlling it. It's control. Now, it, it, that's not demonic. It's not like there's a demon in you. But, but imagine now people that are demon-possessed, how, how they control the person. Well, the, the point I want to make is now, we have the Spirit of God living in us. The Spirit of God living in us that gives us that same hunger as those things that we are obsessed with or addicted to. We have that same Holy Spirit within us. And that Holy Spirit gives us, should give us, when it says you have a spirit of power, not of timidity, that that Spirit should take over our lives to where to where you can't say no to love. You can't say no to, to caring. You can't say no to giving. As strongly, as strongly as that cup of coffee is to you this morning, as strong as maybe that cigarette is to you, as strong as maybe that, that meal is to you this morning, we, it's good and bad. There's good and bad. That's why, that's why the, that Holy Spirit within us is, is powerful. It's powerful. And it, and it can give us incredible urges, incredible urges. Love. When I, since I became a Christian, I have love that I never had before. I have joy that I never had before. Is that mean? If, if it was, then how come I didn't have it before? It was the Holy Spirit within me now that's given me all of that. So we have to be careful now. God has given us a body. We have to be careful that we take care of that body the way that he tells us to. He tells us to, to honor God with your body. I hope this helps you to reconsider how important your Bible, your body is to you and to really take care of it. Amen? Hey, I'm going a little over. God bless you. Have a great morning. I'll see you tomorrow morning.